Hey, it's Andy. Uh, just a quick video on a couple of things that are going on in the markets and in the economy. Uh, obviously, we've been having really good manufacturing data come out and uh, new sales, uh, new orders all look like they're on the rebound, which is giving the market a lot of uh, confidence to move forward and, and, and go up. Uh, the other thing that's giving the market a lot of confidence, uh, despite the coronavirus or because of the coronavirus, is the likelihood, the market believes, that the Fed is going to step in and uh, cut interest rates or provide more liquidity or do whatever, similar to what the PBOC or the People's Bank of China is doing right now to help uh, stimulate economic growth in China while they're experiencing this incredible shutdown of their cities and shutdown of travel to and from China. I'm not sure that the Fed's going to do that, but if that's what the market believes, that's what the market believes. And I think it's really incredibly powerful to um, underscore here that this is what the market focuses on. This component of our three uh, planet model for um, the economy, politics, and technology shows you how important the Fed is when it comes to these markets and the economy and what the stories people are telling themselves uh, to, that, that move the markets forward and really move the economy forward as well. Now, that's not the only thing that's going on. Obviously, the coronavirus continues to grow. Um, it's over 20,000 people uh, infected in China with, I think, over 400 deaths already. We're trying to get a handle on um, what the mortality rate is uh, when it comes to an infection. And I think that's really key for understanding just how bad this is going to get. But right now, the markets seem to be whistling past literally the graveyard when it comes to this and thinking that the central banks are going to come to the rescue again. Watch to see if they do or don't act. That's, of course, important. But really, the mortality rate with this thing is what I'm keenly interested in. And that'll give us a, a, an opportunity to see just how far it's going to uh, spread and the damage it'll do. Now, tonight, we also have the State of the Union address. And of course, at some point, they're going to release the Iowa caucus uh, results. I, I just find that whole thing incredibly uh, wild in the sense that I feel bad for the candidates because some of them should have benefited significantly uh, from their win there, likely Bernie Sanders. But the fact that the way that they were going to roll that out just led me to believe this week that I it, that it was going to be a mess, right? I was the only one. There was a lot of people saying, hey, you know, you realize that there's going to be at least two sets of data coming from this. And it turned out that the Democrats used an app that they've never used before. And that's part of the reason why it kind of fell apart uh, and, and why they struggled so mightily to get the right information out. Uh, still, as of this hour, they haven't produced anything yet. So we'll see what happens. But you know, the State of the Union, the president's going to talk uh, about all the good things he's done. Um, and uh, whether the American voter believes or not, he's going to certainly put that forward as to uh, why he should be reelected. And that's going to be a powerful case, given the fact that we're at such low levels of unemployment. Um, and, and, of course, the fact that the people that are benefiting the most right now are not the super wealthy, but actually the lower end of the income uh, curve or income uh, class, and they're seeing some of the biggest gains in their uh, income levels and wage levels that they've seen in a very long time. So that's great news uh, for the economy, and it's probably pretty good news for the president getting reelected. All right, I'm Andy Bush, out running around again, and just wanted to catch you up on a whole bunch of things that are happening.